Welcome back, everyone. You know, I'm coming up on my 11th anniversary as a Linux user. 11. And for a while, I was a pretty good enthusiast, too. I was always telling people how great it was, how much I enjoyed using Linux, and they'd ask me, what is that, like Red Hat or something? And we'd have nice conversations. But eventually I stopped proselytizing, mostly because I saw how comfortable people were with the software ecosystems they had in Windows and Mac, and I noticed how the software they most valued was not available in Linux. But over the years, I've watched as more and more software has become available for Linux, or at least there's probably a better alternative you could consider. If you like Photoshop, there's GIMP. If you're a digital artist, there's Krita. If you're a video editor, Caden Live reminds me of the old Final Cut Pro before they changed the interface. If you're a writer, Emacs. Also, most of the software people are using these days is not on their desktop, but in the cloud. And you can access it with pretty much any web browser. So what I'm saying is there's never been a better time to try Linux. Here's the story of how I went from slacker to hacker. It was in my college days, and I was writing a story for my creative writing class. I tried to open my Apple Pages document on another computer, and it didn't open. There was a mismatch in the version numbers. I was locked out of my own work. How did this happen to me? I vowed that I would find a better way. I started writing documents in plain text editors instead of fancy word processor apps. Uh, what do you call it, a computer? Uh, no, I mean uh, a word processor. Then it dawned on me, like a light bulb burning in my brain, if all I needed was a plain text editor to do my most important work, then why did I need a fancy MacBook? Couldn't I get by with less? Is less actually more? You could call it digital minimalism. So I started watching YouTube videos about Linux. I tried installing Ubuntu on my MacBook. Didn't get very far, but then I got myself a Lenovo ThinkPad, and I was all squared away. Also, Lenovo ThinkPads are a bit of a meme in the Linux community, but there's a good reason. They're reliable workhorses. The Lenovo I got in 2012 still runs well today. All I did was replace the battery and swap out the rotary hard drive for a solid-state one. Also, switching out internal hardware on my computer was also something I never thought I'd do. Using MacBooks taught me that you just don't do those things. Your best option is to go and sit at the Genius Bar and try to get something fixed, and if that doesn't work, buy a new one. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Here's what I like about Linux, though. Linux provides you with a free operating system through various distributions that have their pros and cons, uh, so you can download it for free and modify it freely. When I first started using it, I was just happy it didn't cost me anything, like the routine macOS updates did at the time. I never thought I would need to modify the operating system in any way, and you may not either. But after a few years, I'm sure you'll find something you want to modify. Uh, Linux respects the user's freedom. Nothing is really laid out for you. It's like a blank canvas, and you can set it up however you like. And at first, that might seem a little intimidating, like you'd walk in and everything would be sort of a confusing mess, or you'd find yourself sitting at a text terminal without any instructions or any idea of what to do next. But it's quite the opposite. The various Linux desktop environments are clean, organized, and once you know your way around, you can start to see how stable it all is. Because of this stability, Linux runs great on older hardware. You could run Linux on a computer you'd find in a thrift shop. Linux takes your project seriously. But now, when I refer to Linux in the third person, I'm not trying to suggest that the people who write the code and contribute to the project actually care about what you use the software for. But that's the point. If your daily tasks are important and you just want to get to work as quickly as possible without a lot of friction, so you can just start using your brain, Linux stays out of your way. You won't be prompted to sign into iCloud every day with no obvious way of getting the computer to stop asking you. You won't be prompted to log into additional cloud services uh, just to be able to access your files and applications. If you value consistency and performance, user experience, and more freedom in how you work, you should consider getting yourself a used Lenovo ThinkPad today, watch a video on how to install a Linux distro with a jump drive, and start making your dreams come true. But that's it. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'm going to leave this video approximately right here. Subscribe if you want to see more. And also, if you want to read my writing that's too hot for YouTube, subscribe to my Substack. You'll find a link below. See you next time.